Okay, hi everyone. You're with the teaching crew from Holloway's Beach Environmental Education Centre today. My name's John. We've got with us Alana, Louise and Terry. And what we're going to be doing is running a transect line through this mangrove area here. Just a couple of things about where we are. We're approximately 30 or 40 metres from the high tide line. The beach is over in that direction. The area that we're going to be running our transect through is an area that suffers from occasional tidal inundation. And you can see further behind us, that area there would be subject to tidal inundation quite regularly. So we'll set our transect up. We'll show you some of the things that you need to record and some of the information that we'll be giving you so that when you come out to do your transect, you'll be able to do what we are about to show you. This is some of the information that you'll need before you start your transect. The date is fairly obvious, same with time, where we are. You do need to take the starting coordinates. So from your first tree on the line, you get your starting coordinates. Our end coordinates we'll get when we get to tree number 25. And we also take a bearing along the compass line. I haven't filled in the plot length yet, because we don't know how far along the transect we have to go until we get to our 25 canopy trees. All right, as you can see, we've laid a tape out through the mangrove forest here. That's going to be our transect line. And we'll be working along that line, taking measurements of the trees that we find along there. Our goal is to find 25 canopy trees. That's a tree that forms part of the canopy. And we'll be taking a series of measurements from each tree along the line. We'll be taking the species of the tree. We'll be measuring how long, how far along the line the tree is and we'll be measuring trees that are fall within one metre either side of the line. We'll be measuring the girth of the trees. We'll also be making a judgment on the health of the trees. We'll be measuring the lean of the tree, the height of the tree, and we'll also be writing down any comments whether there's epiphytes or things like that growing on the tree. This will be number one, tree number one, and we're going to start with that in just a second. So single stem or a multi stem. Fairly obvious that there's only one stem coming off this tree, so it's a single stem. If it was a multi stem, then there would be several different branches coming out of the one trunk. The next measurement is the distance along the tape. Because this is right at the start, the distance along the tape is zero. The distance from the tape is from the centre of the trunk out to our tape line. And Louise, that is? Uh, 14 centimetres. So 14 centimetres from the tape. The next thing is the side of the tape that the tree appears on. Here's our tape, the tree is on the right hand side of the tape. The next thing we want is the species code. Now we know that this is a black mangrove and we'll help you identify the trees when you're here. There is a code here that's really important that you use the correct code. So for a black mangrove, the code is LL and that's the next bit of information that we'll record. Then we want the girth of the tree, which Louise has just measured for me, and the girth of the tree, Louise, is? 35 centimetres. So we've got a 35 centimetre girth. You only need to measure trees that have a girth greater than 10 centimetres. The next thing we measure is the height. Now for the height, we've got a pole here that's in metre increments and put your pole next to the tree and then you need to make a judgment of how high the tree actually is. So two metres up to here, obviously I can slide my pole up there, four metres and then to the canopy it's probably another two metres again. So we're going to say that that tree is a six metre tree and it is forming part of the canopy. The lean of the tree, you need to look at the tree and if it's a vertically tree, vertical tree, then it's got zero lean, and you can use your pole again to get sort of a judgment from that. This one's probably got about a 10 degree lean on it, so we'll say that it's got a 10 degree lean. I've mentioned before that this is a canopy tree. If the tree that you're measuring forms part of the canopy around it, it's a canopy tree. If it's a little tiny tree like this guy here, it would be a sub canopy tree. And if it's a palm tree or something obvious that is emerging from the canopy, then it's called an emergent tree. With the health of the tree, you need to make a determination using this little key here. Again, that's with the species codes. And you can give it a score from five to zero. If the tree's dead, it gets a zero. 
If it's a really healthy tree, then it gets a five. This one here has a few dead twigs on it. So it's probably got about a five to 10% dieback. So the tree score for this would be four. And there's one more little code that we're gonna put in, which is the tree damage code. You heard me just say before that it's got some dead twigs on it. So the damage code is this table here, an LTW. Okay, the next tree along our line is this little guy here, and it's actually a dead tree. With dead trees, you still record all the data for it, and we're about to do that, but it doesn't include in your count of 25 living canopy trees as you work your way along the transect line. Working our way a little bit further along our transect line, we've come across our first multi-stem tree. It just happens to be tree number four. So what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna call this stem 4A, we're gonna call this stem 4B, and we'll take all the measurements for both of those stems. It will only count as one tree though, in our count of 25 canopy trees working along the line. We've just finished measuring this tree here. This is our 25th living canopy tree that we've discovered along our transect line. So because this is the end of our transect line, we're gonna finish off the information that we need at the top of the page. The length that we've come is 25.7 meters. So that's our plot length. And the last thing that we need to do is just get our GPS coordinates again. We started at 1649.574. We've now moved on to 16 degrees, 49 minutes and 565 seconds. And of course, to the east, we are 145 degrees, 24 minutes, 329 seconds. And that's all the information we need. All right, we finished taking our tree information on the transect line. So now we're going to take biotic and abiotic data using our quadrants. So we've laid out a quadrant here and we're going to lay out five quadrants along our transect line, hopefully as equidistant as possible. Alana is going to be taking the measurements and I will be recording them. So the first thing we need to get is the wind speed. We're going to use the anemometer. Alana is holding it up into the wind. And what's the wind speed there, Alana? It's 7.2. 7.2, what's our units? Kilometres per hour. Kilometres per hour. Wonderful. Okay, the next thing we need is the air temperature. So we're going to take that on this really large thermometer here. What's the air temperature here, Alana? The temperature is 29.8 degrees Celsius. Beautiful. Okay, on that same uh, thermometer there, we're also going to take relative humidity. 73. And that was 73%. Beautiful. Now we need to get down and look at our quadrant. Okay, we're going to take the soil temperature here. And for that, we're going to use a probe. When you're using your probe, there's a switch at the back. Make sure it's on. Make sure you've taken the cap off the probe. And we're going to put that into the soil. It will take a little bit of time for that reading to come through um, and stabilise. So just be prepared to wait for that. All right. Stabilised at 30 degrees. Okay, 30 degrees is our temperature there. All right. We're actually going to also investigate the type of soil that we've got here. We're really close to the beach and you can see that the soil looks pretty sandy. But we actually have a test that we do in order to determine the type of soil. So what we need to do is we take a little handful of soil. Do you want to grab a little bit of lana and put it in your palm? That's it. All right, I want you to squeeze it and see if you can make a ball that holds together with that. Yeah, maybe try and roll it up, see if you can get an actual ball. Is it sticking together or is it falling apart? It's falling apart. All right, it's falling apart, which means that we can't make a ball. That means that it's sand. If you can make a ball with that soil, then you're going to then try and elongate that. Follow this procedure. It will tell you the type of soil that you've got. All right, the next thing we're going to measure is the canopy cover. That's a measurement of how much sky is being blocked out by leaves and branches. We're going to use an app on the iPad for that. So have the app open. We're going to lay it flat under a representative area of sky. And we're going to take a photo. Okay, what does that say, Alana? It says detection level 139. Okay, we need to then analyze it. So press analyze. 
and that will give us a percentage. Now I have 68%. 68% cover. It's a pretty shady area. Okay, we now get need to go back down and have a look at our quadra area because we're going to count the living things in there, some of our biotic data. So the first thing we need to do is count the mangrove propagules, that's these things here, or saplings that are in our quadra. How many do we have, Alana? Uh, I can see two propagules. All right, great. And on top of our quadra here, we sometimes have some cover from leaves and things. So we're gonna look at cover. We're gonna estimate how much is just soil and how much is cover. So have we got any live cover there? Anything no. growing? No. All right, what do you think, percentage-wise, how much leaf cover do we have? 3%. 3%? Sounds good to me. Okay, the last thing we need to take are the number of crab holes in this area. It gives us an indication of crab life. So how many crab, li crab holes do we have here, Alana? I can see one, two, three, four. Can you see any more than four? Oh, I can see one hiding just here. Okay. So five in total. Yeah. Great. It is really important that you look under things to make sure that you are getting all of those crab holes. Excellent. All right. We have taken all of our data for this particular quadrant. We're going to move along and do the other four quadrants along the transect line. In addition to that, Alana will be taking photos up and down the transect line and of the various quadrants that we do. Okay, we're back at the Holloways Beach Environmental Education Centre office and I have the results from one of our transects here. I'm going to be inputting those into a uh, Excel data sheet for the Mangrove Watch program. That data then goes on and is shared not only throughout Australia but internationally to keep an eye on our mangrove forests um, to make sure that they stay safe and healthy. So thank you for your work in the transect today.